Welcome to Brentwood Inspired Living Center. Our community began in 1989 as a small worldwide unity book study group, and we've continued the momentum as an ever-evolving spiritual community. Each Sunday, you will find dynamic thought leaders delivering inspiring messages and talented musicians sharing sound healing through their melody. Here, we embrace ancient spiritual traditions, universal truths, and emerging wisdom. Let's check out this Sunday message. We're so grateful you've joined us. It is with mm, immense love that I am here. My name is Amy Van Ling, and I am grateful to be in loving service as the spiritual director of this inspired and inspiring community where our purpose is to be a safe environment for healing, which is really simply returning to wholeness, coming into the oneness with the great divine magnificent spirit, a place and space that you can trust, you know, that you can trust to allow the unfoldment of your tremendous highest and best life. We want to be that place to support you in that and love on you through that. Um, So welcome, welcome in. Mimi's here. She says, good morning, everyone. Michael J says, love and truth blessings are in every breath. I see you. Indeed. Woo. Lots of downloads this morning. It's a blessing and a joy to be here. Indeed, breathing, loving, receiving, deepening our walk in this sacred life. You know, it's just, it's such a sacred, every moment is sacred. Uh, we can make that so. So I welcome you to another Sunday here with us. I'm grateful to be with you. We're grateful to be with you. Uh, just I invite I invite you in to the frequency of of love and being in that vibration of the cosmos. You know where where infinite possibilities abound, mm-hmm. and where you can really feel yourself, your your truth. So every once in a while, I'm looking down because I've got my phone here to see who's tuning in with us. And I love that. I love to see you here. So thank you. Thank you for tuning in and tuning within, you know, moving into that space of receptivity and openness and tuning into that higher harmonic frequency uh, that's available. You have joined us here at Brentwood Inspired Living Center. This is our Inspired Sunday Gathering. And we meet here streaming live every single Sunday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. And we're so grateful to be here taking that in-breath of the spirit. You all know that's my favorite definition of inspiration. So we get to inhale, mm, activating our souls, claiming that highest version of ourselves. So as we do that, we are remembering our theme this month of September is peaceful power. And we're promoting peace. And every September, in honor of Unity World Day of Prayer and International Day of Peace, we come together for a peace walk. And this year will be our eighth annual peace walk. And during COVID, we called a peace talk. We still did. It was on Zoom. Uh, We still had our candles with us. And so this year, we're back in full swing at Brentwood City Park. And um, we're going to be there hearing uplifting music, inspiring messages, and we, we truly believe that creating these moments of togetherness, we are, are so invaluable. And this is, this is how we nurture our community and one another. And this is how we promote peace. And we're so excited about this happening. And I will be there. And so I look forward to seeing you. That is September 26th, Tuesday evening, 6.30 p.m. at Brentwood City Park. Um, yeah, so we can... We can be that instrument of peace, as St. Francis says in his prayer. So, um, yes, yes, that's what we're doing, and I'm excited that I'll be there. And we are absolutely thrilled to be here this morning with magical Reverend Wendy and amazing, inspiring Ronnie and our truly mm, powerful, peaceful pillar, Nancy. She is uh, such a beautiful member of our community. And I tell you, she's a lot of glue that holds a lot together behind the scenes. So thank you, Nancy. To remember that when we're in this space together, we can energize. We can energize, activate the vibration of love just by moving our energy in that direction. You can, you can draw it up through your um, energy centers or your chakras to create flow. And then you go ahead and you can share that out. And however you do that, maybe you pour it out through your crown chakra, your heart chakra, 
uh, or wh whatever space that you feel is just bubbling over and you can imagine mm, light or just the energy, how that might look and, and send it out to everybody because we feel it. This is, we exchange this energy and it's felt and it makes a difference. That's the important piece. It makes a difference. So thank you for that participating, uh, participating. Mm, yeah. And that co-creation of love. So it is my utmost pleasure, joy, honor to welcome back the beloved mm, Reverend Wendy Silvers. She's a radiant ray of light. She brings her brilliance to everybody who knows her. And, you know, she's just this dazzling essence. And we're so grateful for her presence with us this morning. Her message today is peace is right where you are. So don't get lost in the weeds. <laughs> don't you love that? Because we can get lost in the weeds, right? <laughs> I know I can anyway. So we're so thankful for you sharing the gift of yourself, Wendy, with us and your dynamic energy and bringing your kind, compassionate and passionate soul to us today. Um, I have to just quickly tell the story. The first time I ever saw Wendy, she was in her passion place. We spent a lot of time at the California Capitol in 2015, shining the light on some legislation there. And I heard her praying from afar. And immediately the friend I was with, I said, we need to go get in that prayer circle. <laughs> and that's the first time I ever saw Wendy. So um, it's with deep gratitude that we welcome you back here with us today. And there is also a workshop today, and that's held right after our service. That's on a separate Zoom link. That's where everybody can come into the Zoom room and connect together. That's from 1130 to 1230 Pacific time. And this workshop is Sowing Seeds of Peace, and it's going to be very powerful. So just grab yourself a, a quick drink and a snack and then tune into the workshop right when we complete here. It's going to be amazing. And everyone's welcome. Remember that. So feel free to invite your friends, neighbors, family, whoever's in the next room, pull them in. <laughs> and everyone can be uplifted today. This is going to be a powerful space. So we are also this morning eagerly welcoming the soulful, sensational, truly sensational Ronnie Ong. She's here with us sharing her harmonious melodies through her musical magic and her sound healing. And we're so tremendously grateful for your presence, Ronnie, your gentleness and your peace. Um, I was actually cleaning out my Google Docs yesterday, which is quite a task sometimes. And I found this old uh, folder with the song that you had, the Holy Now song that you had played and sang and with our old piano. <laughs> and I was feeling so much gratitude that you had done that for me and so grateful for you, Ronnie. Thank you for Zooming in today with us from Hawaii. We're grateful. And we do have this peaceful, loving, present, sweetest soul we know as Nancy. She's here to share our inspirational reading, community announcements, and our prayer of plentitude this morning. Thank you, Nancy, for being uh, the right-hand woman. And like I said, she's a magical lady. She keeps the engines greased around here. And I am so grateful, Nancy, for you and be, for your shining your light with us this morning. We feel you and love you so much. So thank you. Wendy, Ronnie, and Nancy for gifting us with your presence uh, on Zoom here this morning. We're blessed to have you. And thank you, everybody, all these precious souls on our live stream. Thank you for committing your time and energy to co-creating this space with us, for joining us, for bringing your spectacular spirits and dedicating your hearts to creating a kind, just loving global society for every single person. Thank you for being on the journey together with us. So um, let me check in here. Hi, Pat. Pat's here. She says, good morning from Oregon. And I think Dave is here. He says, good morning. Yay. I am so grateful for everybody here tuning in. So I invite you to tune in within now and um, just feel into our mission statement. We're going to mm, just release tension you know, if you have any, if you're holding any, sometimes if we're holding it, we don't realize it, you know, maybe in our jaw or our fists or even our forehead. Have you ever held tension in your forehead? Just feel that vibrational flow, that space where you're the gentle observer and um, feel into our mission statement here. We are an open, heart-centered spiritual community honoring the one presence within us. And we welcome all people to connect, grow, and expand in wisdom, compassion and love 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 
Yay. So it is time for us now to open up with our community sing along. So remember that singing is a quick way to connect to the heart and allow uh, flow. And so this song is specifically inviting you to sing along, to raise your vibration and get that flow moving. So sing along at home. I'm going to uh, hand the screen over here to, uh, to Ronnie now. Thank you, Ronnie. Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, I don't know if we've sang this song before as a sing-along. It's called Peace Is All I Know by Stowe Good. They're a, du they're a duo. Um, you know, they're a, they're a new thought group. Um, so if you don't know this song, at least the chorus goes, Peace is all I know, peace is all I know. In this moment, I'm whole, peace is all I know. And believe me, I needed to sing this song this week. So here goes. <laughs> might want to turn up your volume too. I hear that this is not <laughs> optimal. Bring me back to center. Bring me back to flow. Now my soul Beautiful, darling. We just need to remember to sing that in traffic and yes, <laughs> yes. the line is long and all of those times when we might feel a little edgy. So thank you. Thank you for bringing that and your peaceful soul to us, Ronnie. You're just such a, such a joy. Hmm. So now I get to turn the screen over to Nancy. She's got our community announcements and our inspirational reading this morning. Thank you so much, Nancy. You're still muted, beloved. I'm sorry. Uh, good morning. And uh, for the um, announcements, be sure to stay for an engaging workshop after the service beginning at 1130 to 1230. You won't be disappointed as we always have engaging discussions. And now coming very soon, next Saturday, in fact, September 16th, we'll be having our second yard sale this year. It will be held at Jan's home, 739 Stewart Way, in Brentwood, Somerset 4. Please help us by donating items, including clothing and small furniture. You can drop the donations off at Jan's Thursday, 4 to 7, or bring to Jan's house at 6.30 to 8 a.m. on Saturday, September 16th. Call Jan for the gate code, 925-813-0422. 
Please call Jan or me if you can assist in any way at the sale. We still need helpers for setup and breakdown. And at 1230 on the same day, next Saturday in Jan's backyard, we will be honoring all of our wonderful members and volunteers with a member appreciation lunch. Come to mingle, eat, enjoy, and the music by the 360 band. To ensure we have enough food, if you haven't RSVP'd yet, please text me today or tomorrow. Also, we're having a pre-sale party. Come over to Jan's on Thursday, September 14th from four to seven for a pre-yard sale party. Come ready to find wonderful treasures and beat the crowd. Mark your calendars for our third big event in September, our eighth annual Peace Walk happening on Tuesday, September 26th. Bring your family and friends and join us all. Amy Van Ling, Father Tom Bonacci, and Reverend Wilma Garvey for our eighth annual Peace Walk at the Brentwood City Park, beginning at 6.30. This is our opportunity to unify with the community in sending our messages of peace to the world. Let's speak our words and light our candles of peace together. And please call me if you can assist with the Peace Walk setup. Please remember to check the website and like and share our Facebook page to stay updated on lots of new and upcoming events. Blessings and gratitude to you all. And now for our inspirational reading. Our reading today is from the book entitled Daily Word for Women. We begin with a quote. The peace of every person on earth is here now, but it takes a vision to bring it into visibility. Sue Sicking. Peace is an ongoing process, and although it may not be achieved overnight, it can grow day by day, person by person. World peace means more than just the end of all turmoil. It is love that nourishes and sustains. It is faith that continues to grow from person to person and remains strong from generation to generation. I may have no roadmap to world peace, but I don't need one, for God will guide my actions and words. When I am at peace with myself, I will be peaceful toward all people. Peace comes about as individual by individual believes that it is possible and perseveres until it, it is a reality for all. With the energy of a world of people directed toward peace, unrest withers and is blown away. God's spirit is the source of world peace, all of peace. And so it is. Thank you, Nancy. I was sort of like settling in <laughs> for more. Thank you for those reminders. Um, such great reminders. You know, we're just cultivating. We are, we are capable of cultivating peace and in so doing, just bringing so much love and connection into our world. So thank you for those reminders. All right, I'm going to hand the screen back to Ronnie for our next song this morning. So this song, this is, uh, you know, uh, the, the prayer for protection, uh, which I put into music because I love this prayer so much. And I know different, you know, we've, we've given it different versions and so forth, but I, this is the simple original version.
protects us. The presence of God watches over us wherever we are. God is. God is. Wherever That is so soul stirring. I love that in song form. Thank you, thank you. Oh, it's beautiful. Thank you, Ronnie. I think I think everyone should adopt it in song form. <laughs> it just has so much depth to it. I mean, it's a beautiful oh. prayer regardless, but thank yes, you yes. for that. I really appreciate that. And isn't it funny how every unity has their own little like tweak, yes. you know, every response, time you go, it's like you their know, own little yeah. signature. Yeah. To yes, the, yes, to the yes. prayer. Oh, yes. thank you, Ronnie. We appreciate that. Boy, that's beautiful. Mm. Okay. I'm going to hand the screen over to Nancy and she is going to be sharing our blessing of abundance this morning. Thank you so much, Nancy. Thank you. I invite you to join me now as we move into a space of oneness with spirit. We quiet our minds and open to the great realization of an abundant universe. We connect with an inner stillness that is grounded in the divine flow of giving and receiving. We practice gratitude for all that life gives us and accept there is more coming our way. We align and operate from our divine nature to give freely from a compassionate heart to ourselves and others, assured we are never void. We set our intention to engage in right action that attracts opportunities to prosper. We are each a very grateful spirit expanding in this human life. We are gratefully succeeding in stepping forward into greater good. And so it is. Thank you so much, Nancy. Yes, and so it is, you know, that, that divine love is always flowing through us. So mm, thank you. Okay, well, we are going to have our final song from Ronnie and and open up, open up for the sound healing. She's bringing it today. Thank you, Ronnie. <laughs> so this song is, uh, you might have heard of it if you listen to New Thought songs. It's uh, uh, it's called I Dream of Rain, and it's by Garrett. It's another duo, Garrett and Martin, J.D. Martin and Jan Garrett. Anyway, um, here it goes. <laughs> I dream 
What a sweet song. Thank you for that. Uh, it's, it actually goes right into, I feel like it went right flowing from the law of circulation right into supporting our life force of peace. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you for bringing your beautiful sound healing to us this morning. It was very powerful and magnificent. So thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Also, both of you for activating our space with this enormous splendor. We're grateful for you for your spirit presence and your smiles this morning. Thanks for tuning in with us. And I will see you on the Facebook side of things here. Blessings, love so much. Hello, everybody. I see you. I see comments coming in. All the love and gratitude to, to Ronnie for her music and Nancy for the readings. And hello, Christy and everyone else who has logged in since I last peeked down at my phone. We welcome you in with big virtual hugs. <laughs> So hello, beloveds. I am here. Here we are with Wendy Silvers, Reverend Wendy. I am so thankful for this divine connection with this, this sweet spirit and um, your willingness to share your heart with us. Uh, Wendy's life is really, truly a living testimony of being an expansive loving presence. Um, and we're just so grateful to see you again. And so I'm going to share more about Wendy for those of you who are just getting to know Wendy. This is her, this is her bio, all the really cool stuff about her. Wendy Silvers is a sought after mama wisdom teacher, minister, spiritual midwife, author, and sacred activist. For the past 18 years, she has been immersed in serving moms, children, and families through trauma-informed heart-centered parenting. Reverend Wendy believes that a woman steeped in her immense value as sovereign being helps to raise a nation that cherishes the women and children. Wendy co-created Prayer as a Way of Life prayer class at Agape International Spiritual Center, co-authored an international best-selling book, Balance for Busy Moms, and founded the Million Mamas Movement, an organization devoted to the empowerment of mothers, ensuring that all mothers and children thrive. She produces international prayer events, docu-series, town halls, film screenings, and rallies. Wendy braids her intuitive medium abilities, publicity skills, and trauma-informed training with new thought principles to help people awaken spiritually and cultivate a life of peace, purpose, and prosperity. Wendy created and leads the programs Awaken Your Intuition, World Peace Begins at Home, The Awakened Mother, and hosts Mother's Heart Meditation. She blogs. Um, she's affiliated with the Agape International Spiritual Center as an Agape minister. And she has another book coming soon. And Wendy has shared stages with Michael Beckwith, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., Del Bigtree, Marianne Williamson, a whole list of visionaries. And she's based in Los Angeles. And we're so grateful to have her with us speaking on peace. It's the perfect topic uh, for this beautiful soul. Uh, remember that we're having a workshop right after um, our talk here this morning. So tune in for that. We'll have a little short Q&A after Wendy concludes, and then we'll zip over to that Zoom link. And I'll drop that in our chat feed here. It's also on our homepage, which is brentwoodilc.org, right on the homepage. You'll see a picture of Ronnie, Wendy, and then the Zoom link into the workshop. But for now, we're here, and I'm so excited. I'm going to pray us in, and then I'm going to hand the screen over to this beloved soul that we call Reverend Wendy. So uh, just tune in with me and feel into your, your special place, your center. Today, we're grateful. We're grateful to come together to energize and expand the vibration of love and peace in the world. And that begins right here in our own hearts. And then our allowance to, to uh, support that ripple outward into our communities and into the greater global society. And so we give thanks, great thanks right now for the reciprocal nature of life, celebrating the oneness with the infinite power and presence, embracing the mystery and allowing peace and harmony to, to take that 
deeper into our truest place of being. Resting in the mystical and expanding into greater awareness, our hearts are open, opening even more, and our minds attuned as we cover Reverend Wendy this morning with our love and our thanksgiving. So grateful that she is the conduit for the message of spirit, of holiness, of goodness, and full of gratitude that she allows that message of peace to flow through her. And she shares it freely with everyone. Mm, I claim divine truth and love and bountiful blessings. And I release this word of love into the great infinite field of peace and possibilities this morning. And so it is. Ashe. Amen. Namaste. It's all yours, Wendy. Peace is right where you are. Don't get lost in the weeds. Thank you, beloved. Thank you so much, Amy. And good morning, everyone. It's so good to be with you. Thank you for uh, the opportunity and the invitation to be with your sweet community, Amy. I love you. And I cannot wait to give you a hug in person. I, virtual hugs are awesome, but there's something about that, you know, connection. So I really look forward to that day soon. You are such a beautiful soul and I'm grateful to know you. So thank you for that. Thank you. And welcome everyone. This is, this is going to be a deep dive into the exploration of your embodiment of peace. I, I wanna let you know it's gonna be interactive, so get your fingers ready. Um, although I won't be able to see the Facebook, so that might have to be something we do in the workshop. But uh, I'll tell you a little bit about who I am. So as Amy said, I'm Reverend Wendy Silvers. I am an agape minister. I've been affiliated with Agape for over, well, over 24 years, but um, I've been uh, a minister, which to me is really, it's, a, it's a, a way of life, just like a practitioner. I was a practitioner first, and that is a way of life. It's practicing the presence in all of my affairs. I've been on a spiritual path since I was eight um, that I can consciously remember. I always knew that there was, there was something more, and I was always very, um, in touch with and in communication with the invisible. And, uh, and so my life has been pulled by spirit or pushed, you know, that inner compelling desire to know more. Um, like a lot of us, I had a lot of trauma in my early childhood, which actually propelled me into really seeking, this just can't be it. I know that I'm here for more than this. And so I, I have always been on a spiritual path. Um, it's just been as natural to me as my breathing. There's, I remember I wanted to be a pediatrician when I was a little girl. I don't know where I got that from, but I was like dancer, pediatrician. And then I found out that there would be surgery and blood. And I was like, no, I'm not gonna do that. And then I got in, I was like this opportunity for, to activate human potential. And I ended up, I know it was spirit directed, but I ended up in the entertainment industry where I was in for many years. And I was a, a press agent. I was involved in creating really successful public, camp, public relations campaigns for films, for celebrities, for books, musicians, and I kept feeling the stirring because I wasn't at peace. I was not at peace, even though peace is right where I am, peace is right where you are. I wasn't at peace. And I would have people say things to me as I was moving through, you know, creating these campaigns and tours and interviews. And I would have some of the, some of the talent that I worked with would be like, I think you'd be such a great producer or you'd be such a great manager because the, the impulse for me, the peace impulse for me was about connection. And so this opportunity for me to be a connected being meant that I was at peace. I wasn't at peace if I couldn't connect with people. And that's why we live in this time where it's about everything is virtual. And then we're going deeper into that. I'll go, I'll, I'll dive into that. 
you know, with virtual reality and these fake things, so um, fake sort of environments. And so I ended up arriving at Agape purely because my husband, who was my then fiance, and I bumped in to somebody that he knew from undergrad. And she spent five minutes with me and she said, I have a place for you. And I walked into the doors of Agape and I heard the message and the music and I felt like I could exhale. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? This, this, this desire to find yourself, to come home to yourself, to be at peace. I spent so many years in a war in, in my head about who am I? Where do I belong? What is my path? I know there's more for me. And not being able to be at peace with where I was at because I knew that there was something more. And I honestly didn't have in my life I don't know about anybody else. I didn't have anybody that was showing me, that was leading me or, or directing me or guiding me or, or, or showing me how I could possibly have an opportunity to find that. I was the only one in my family that was interested in that which was not seen. I was the only one in my family that felt pulled to have for lack of, I don't like qualitative words or these evaluative words, but for lack of a better description, a bigger life. I felt like I was connected to something bigger. I felt like I was here with a, with a purpose, with a mission. And it was to be the best I could be and to be of service to people. I used to have people come up to me and say to me, you're a teacher, right? I, I know that you're a teacher. And I'd be like, mm, mm, um, no, <laughs> no, I, I, I'm, I'm not, but uh, you know, I'm, thank you. You know, this, this is really interesting. And so when it comes to peace, for those that are on Facebook, I want you to put down in the Facebook thread, what is peace to you? What is peace? Give me three or four words. Give me a sentence. What is peace? Because I hear in marketing, and believe me, I was one of the people that helped create narratives. So I understand when you're seeing things in the media and you're seeing everybody saying it, that emerged, I'm just letting you know, that emerged from a publicist, and some other people that came up with words to influence people to see things from a certain perspective. So I'm just letting you know, giving you the behind the scenes. So we hear a lot about peace. We hear thought leaders talk about peace is, it's this. what is peace to you? Doesn't matter what anybody else says, but what is peace to you? And do you have that? Do you remember that whole campaign? And I'll look at the comments or Amy can share with me some of the comments if she's willing. But do you remember that campaign got milk? As if, just to, just to let you know, as if dairy is really great for your body and your microbiome. <laughs> just say, that's a whole nother talk. But got milk? You know, Big Ag wanted you to drink milk. So got milk? making it really, you know, juicy and sexy and all this. So like, got milk? Do you got peace? Got peace? Are you looking for peace? Look within. What if I told you that peace is not something to find, but something to reveal? And what if I told you that you already possess all the tools you need to access this piece and reveal it? Ishua, the great master teacher whom I love, 
said something that was so profound. And he said, peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. The world cannot give you peace. It cannot satisfy you in the way that a whole soul peace from within satisfies. To me, one of the qualities of peace is contentment. Being content. I have lived so many years of discontentment. What is, you know, there's this prayer, the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity, which is a quality of peace. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change and the courage to change the things I can. Now there's more to that serenity prayer, but I'm not gonna read that now. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I can. So where are we going for this peace? Going to the divine. That store, that coffee, that drink, that person cannot give you peace. It's incapable of that in any sustainable way. But does that stop us? Does that stop us from thinking that person, that job, that title will give us that peace, will give us that feeling of wholeness? Courage to change the things we can. So I just have to tell you a little PS. I am a sacred activist. What that means is that when I see something, when I see an injustice, when I'm aware that there are <clears throat> actions that are being taken, including legislation, initiatives, principles, not universal principles, practices that might harm another sentient being, I turn within and I wait for direction and then I move. I am moved from the spirit to transform, not change. Change happens. You change your hair, you change your mind, you change your dress, you change your suit. Change happens. Transformation is an inner process and it is a choice. So God grant me the serenity. I turn within, I get the direction to change, transform the things I can. To the courage to accept, right? The courage to change what I can, the courage, all my heart, I'm doing it with my whole heart. I'm not doing it half, you know what? I'm doing, you know, half measures avail us nothing, right? We don't, we, when we commit to something, the universe rushes to support it. That's why intention is so powerful. Because when we start to waver, when we start to question or have self-doubt, anybody here have self-doubt? Just put a me in the comments. Maybe it's just me, but I've definitely grappled with self-doubt. But God grant me this serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Mm, sacred activist, love revolutionary, as I, as I heard coined uh, by Michael Beckwith. I love that because I've always called myself a love emissary. I've called myself a love evolutionary, but the revolutionary, right? We get to evolve beyond. We get to revolve around God, the divine presence, the divine principle. So this love revolutionary that I am, mm, I don't always have serenity 
in accepting the things that I cannot change. That's why peace is so important. And that's why I don't get caught in the weeds, the distractions, the head new, the breaking news, the, the headlines, you know, this news cycle that just, just loves to just dice, slice and dice the lowest vibratory frequencies in the world. Why in the world is mainstream media called legacy? That's a weed. It's not a legacy. What legacy is it imparting? The legacy that you and I get to activate is peace right where we are. Don't get caught in the weeds. The weeds of judgment and condemnation, the weeds of unforgiveness, the weeds of victim. It's a weed. Let's prune it out. We don't have to hate on it. The weed of racism and bigotry. We don't have to hate on it. We get to, we get to, as Martin Luther King Jr. said, I just discovered this this morning because I was writing about the, the jangling discord of our time. And I happened to Google peacemakers and Martin Luther King said jangling discord. I was like, okay, spirit, I am supposed to speak about the jangling discords, the weeds. The weeds are the breaking news that wants to hijack your critical thinking. It says to you, oh, if you follow me here, if you do this there, you're gonna have peace. You're gonna have contentment. I can assure you, I absolutely can assure you with all of the breath in my being, the way to peace is not out there. The way to peace is in here. And even when we turn within, even when we have, you have, I have, a consistent meditation practice, those jangling discords, those weeds can pop up. And that's why I say peace is right where you are. That's why Yeshua said, peace I give unto you. Not the world, the peace of knowing that you and I are one with the one. There's no distance, there's no distraction, there's no separation, one with the one. So what does it look like when you are in peace? There's a quiet confidence. Don't have to be, maybe, maybe you do feel like you need to carry a sign. Maybe you do feel like you need to go to march. Maybe you need to go to the Capitol or to your legislator's office or to the corporations and stand there with a sign. Maybe you do with a quiet confidence. Maybe you call your legislators. Nope, not on my watch. This isn't happening, right? But first, first, you turn within, you turn away from the outer commentary, you turn away from the jangling discord, you soothe your soul, you soothe your heart. There's a lot of conversation, and I do it too, because it's part of what I teach about regulating your nervous system. The jangling discord happens from a dysregulated nervous system. That's how disorder happens. Disordered eating, disordered thinking, distorted perceptions, the stories that we can tell ourselves that aren't true, that are based on past hurts and unresolved issues or maybe there's something going on with our chemistry. But when we can have a quiet confidence, when we can come back again and again and again to the center, we dive in, we go in, we center down as Howard Thurman has invited us many times.
and it's not a one and done. That's why we have an open and receptive mind. That's why Ernest Holmes talked about in his day, religious science, new thought movement was open at the top so that as we grow and evolve, because we live in, in an ever expanding multiverse, it's ever evolving, ever expanding, just like us. We get to evolve into our next greatest expression, as you hear people say, the next greatest version of ourselves. So we don't have to hate on what we've done, who we were, there may be moments, you know, really, there may be moments of sadness and regret, glancing back and going, gosh, I wish I didn't say do, wish I did say, wish I did do. And the invitation always is to be kind, to be loving, you know, is this helpful? Is this loving? Is this kind? Is this necessary? right now. So we turn within, we have this at one minute with the divine presence that is right where we are. We cultivate quiet confidence. We have an open and receptive mind. We have a heart that is open to receive the good that is available, to receive inspiration. That, that inspirited, that inspiration, that, that divine download. And then we have expectancy, which is really, we pray believing. We pray believing it is so, and then we just know. We don't theorize, we know, we embody. Because peace is right where you are. No one holds your peace for you, just like no one holds your good. No one holds your peace. And when you, maybe you get together with a group, just like Grant Wood Inspired Living Center. I know that the name is going to change, but just like this beautiful, sweet community, you come together in this group field and you hold peace but you break it down. I can't wait to hear what's in the comments. You break it down. What is peace? You hold those qualities together and you create a field that cannot be rent asunder. It cannot be destroyed. And you're doing that for the community. You're doing that for the world. And yes, of course, you start right where you are and you bring that into your home. If you're parenting children, if, if that's the season of your life, you bring that peace. Because when you have equanimity, when you have equipoise, you bring that into your relationships. There's still shizzle that will happen. I really want you to hear that. You are not exempt. You're in a bodysuit, a spiritual being having a human life. So there are going to be trials and tribulations, there's going to be the vicissitudes of life, but peace is right where you are. Don't get caught in the weeds. Don't allow untruth to become your truth. Don't create these personal laws that are based on hurt and pain and unresolved issues to become the laws of your life. You get to recreate your life right here, right now. We can agree in consciousness that you are a powerful creator, that you are here on purpose with a mighty purpose and peace is right where you are. So you get to set an intention. You get to have your, your sacred circle, hold that attention, intention with you and help you bring your attention. When you drift, right? When you drift, your buddy, your pal goes, mm, I see who you are. I know you're not, this is not the easiest time for you, but I know who you are. I know you have everything within you to move through this. And I'm here for you. I got your back. God's got your back. 
And I'm standing in proxy for God right here, right now, saying to you that you are a powerful creator, that you have everything that you need within you to be a peace emissary, to embody peace, to reveal peace, to reflect peace through and as your very life, through and as your relationships. And I can tell you, you will have opportunities to remember that if you're in a marriage or in a relationship, you're a parent, you're gonna have lots of opportunities to practice. So it's about practicing. Will you practice it? Will you? That's the invitation. That's the, the invitation. And I am going to read something to you to help you as we close. This is something that I just love. And you know, what's really important to remember too, right? So peace is not soft. A lot of times you might hear people, oh, that peace stuff, it's so soft. Or, oh my gosh, you're gonna pray. Oh my God, that's so soft. Let me tell you, it takes so much strength to hold a vibration of peace in the midst of anything unlike peace. It's just like a story that I, I heard the other day and I'll count it. And I've heard it, I, I've heard it at um, Agape as well. Michael Beckwith has said it before, but it's something that really, really stuck with me. So Martin Luther King Jr. was at a location. He was about to do something. And a man came up to him and said, are you Martin Luther King Jr.? And he said, why, yes, I am. And the man spit at him. And, Martin Luther King Jr. took out his handkerchief, wiped the spit from his face, and handed the handkerchief back to the man and said, I believe this belongs to you. That is not a weak action. That is a, a tower of strength. That is a tower of prayer and meditation and contemplation and moving from a place of soul, not here, which is a beautiful, the mind's a beautiful um, apparatus. <laughs> so I wanna read this to you from another man who had a spiritual awakening. And this is what he, he said, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon, where there is doubt, faith, where there is despair, hope, where there is darkness, light, where there is sadness, joy. O oh, divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Amen. I leave this with you, my friends. Peace is right where you are. Do not get caught in the weed of the jangling discords of the wounded human ego. Remember who you are. You are God's very own. You are made in the Zelma and the Damut of this presence, the image and likeness. So you get to, you get to, it's a privilege. You get to be that place and space of peace, of love, of truth, of beauty, even when the going gets tough. And especially when the going gets tough, you get to hold that because you are holding that not only for yourself, but for all of those people who interact with you. And I know you have that ability. I know that you are a powerful creator. Thank you for being here. I love you. Peace and blessings. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you so much for bringing your wisdom, your heart, your peace to us. There are so many golden nuggets of takeaways here that um, I'm just so grateful for. I'm grateful for your, your vulnerability to just to, to really just be so authentic and share from your soul. We feel it. I feel it. 
I love this jangling, the weeds are this jangling discord. It's so such a perfect description of getting lost in the weeds. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you for that. Uh, there were a lot of comments coming in about what peace is for people. So I thought maybe we would just uh, kind of go back to that. Yeah. Tranquility, calmness, strength and non-defensiveness. Jennifer said, acceptance, unconditional love, surrender. Michael J said, uh, peace is a presence that holds my unique frequency and I feel its energy. It lives inside of me like my breath. Um, I think you had asked something else or some Mimi <laughs> answers. Jan says, peace is a calm internal serenity and clarity that my every thought, intention, action, movement is for the highest good of all. Mm. Pat was responding to St. Francis, uh, the prayer you just read. Yeah, you know, I mean, just if we just wake up every day and say, make me an instrument of peace. Yeah. Like, mm, that profound intention can create so much. Mystery. And when you read when you read the newspapers or you're scrolling on social media and you 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 hear things and it hits you. Mm -hmm. That's the perfect opportunity for you to go within and see what is true yeah. because that emotion to trigger people's emotions, it allow it, it takes people off their center. Yeah. So we don't deny, dismiss, or disregard what we see or what bring, what disturbs us, but we bring equilibrium and we can't, it's not about being perfect. Yeah. Right. It's we're going to have those moments when we are caught in the weeds. We just don't stay there. Yeah. We remember to remember. Right. So I'm yes. doing a I'm doing a five day uh, inner peace challenge. Tell so us. People, are, people are, are welcome next week. People are welcome to uh, go to either my Facebook page or if they want me to um, want to be on my email list, they can email me. Um, hello at wendysilvers.com. And uh, I can also come back and post the the link to it uh, later. Yeah, but, let's, yeah, definitely. Let's do that. I mean, this is, this is profound conversation that we're having, because this is how this, when you're talking about being a revolutionary, you know, that we're evolving and if we, if we're not doing something different, if we're not showing up in a different way, then that's not going to happen. And, uh, I love the story about Martin Luther King. I actually had someone spit on me. I wish I could say that I, I was so eloquent with my, I didn't say anything, but I wish I had thought of <laughs> something like he did yes. during the legislation that we had talked about earlier. And, um, I did hold peaceful space, but I can, I can tell you that it was, it was not easy. <laughs> It was not. Yeah. I know. I, I I encountered some really intense uh, yeah. negativity. Yeah, and, and it, it's, to continue, like you said, it's it's um, I don't I don't think I wrote down the words you were using, but it it's definitely not this weak thing to be peaceful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's extreme. No. This is the peaceful power we're talking about. It's um, yeah, it's ours to do. Yeah, that's yeah, why I just keep I, hearing it's ours to do. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, if you think about the difference, you know, peace is not the absence of conflict. It's the removal of violence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's, as Gandhi talked about, there's different forms of violence. Right. There's emotional, mental, physical, political. Mm -hmm financial, educational, religious, sometimes spiritual. So it's, you know, that's why I'm so, I'm a wordsmith and I know you are too. So I, that's why it's so important for me too, um, as somebody who's very global to, what is peace? Yeah. What does that mean? What is the word? What is the quality? Because if it's too far off, my experience with working with people for so many years and also myself 
-hmm. is that if it's too far off, it's inaccessible to me. Like, I, you know, have you ever gone somewhere and you've heard someone speak and they're, you know, what they've said just touches your heart, your soul. And then somebody will say to you, what did they say? And it's, <laughs> and I've been like, um, yeah. Um, I don't know. I just know how I felt, which is yeah. important because we live in a, a, a frequent, a frequential, a frequency universe, multiverse. And when we go to articulate it, when we go to embody it, you know, that openness, it's, it's, we want to move from embodiment, yeah. not intellectual theory, which it has its place. Right. But when you feel called, to trans be a trans source for a transformed world, you want to embody it. Yes. Right. Who you are speaks so loudly. You need not utter a word. Right. Uh, 100%. I just love what you said. And you know what it ties into our theme last month was wisdom. So we talked a little bit about this, which was, you know, sort of like, what is the difference between, you know, knowledge or, and wisdom? And, and I sort of came to this, conclusion of, you know, this knowledge is like what we hold intellectually, right? We can know all these practices. We can know what, what all the greats and, and visionaries talk about peace, but that doesn't necessarily mean we're, we're um, implementing it in our life. We're embodying it as a spirit being. And yeah. that there's the difference, right? Is to, and then the end of the, the, um, the serenity prayer was, and to wis the wisdom to know the difference <laughs> back to the wisdom, you know, uh, this conversation is really so rich and so, so potent and important for our time, for our time. Yeah, and so. I'm, I'm so grateful for everyone tuning in. Let's, um, I just want to finish some of the comments. Transformation oh. into peace is a choice. Mimi said, thank you for the most important message. Agreed. Thank you, Mimi. Um, Wendy is spectacular. Jan says, thank you, Wendy. Powerful reminder to me. Mitch says, boy, did I need to hear this peace exclamation point. Yes, I affirm. Jennifer says, thank you, Reverend Wendy. I love the reminder to keep our intention for peace at the forefront of our thoughts, despite our experiences of being a human being. <laughs> <laughs> uh, On Michael the 405 or some freeway when somebody <laughs> cuts you off and you've got an infant in the back, you're like, and these are, you know, like you said, th these are our opportunities. We'll have opportunities. And, and that's what, that's what we're called. I feel this is, it's ours to do, you know, <laughs> that's why we're here. It's ours to do. If you're here in this arena and especially here in this moment, uh, hearing, even if it's this moment later, but you're listening, <laughs> you're here. This is your, yours to do because you wouldn't yeah. be tuning in if it wasn't. It, you wouldn't be here if it wasn't you're you're being you're a vibrational match for what's being said here so michael j says yes profound truth and the transformation of energy is my response to my vision being a loving presence we need practice of how to embody the frequency and vibrations uh, please join me with when the spiritual practice yes we're practicing and so now we get to nourish ourselves take a quick uh, hydration break and then okay. come back to the workshop, which we're going to dive into sowing the seeds. So blessed be beautiful people. We are here doing this together and I'm so thankful to be on this journey together. Thank you, Wendy, for sharing your email. Let's drop all of that in the, the chat. I'm going to, and then anything. So the, the five day inner peace challenge is going to be on your Facebook page or Instagram uh, or both or it's probably going to be Zoom. I might, I might okay. have a, I might have a Facebook group. I'm still, I haven't decided okay. uh, where I'm going to do that, but definitely Zoom. Okay, I want it so to be, I want it to, you know, it's really important to me that people have a, a very safe, sacred space. Yes. And I love, love, love Facebook. So it's not, that's not a thing. But when we're doing like a challenge, I always feel like maybe it's better to have it in a, you know, just Zoom. So all of that yeah. being said, that all I those love details that. will be sent. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's, that's kind of the same intention behind our doing workshops. In exactly. Because we're exactly. together, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, I All appreciate right. you for, um, stepping, stepping up, you know, and, and doing that because it's, it's such a valuable 
such a value, valuable resource for people to come in and, and kind of learn because like you said, it can sound a little lofty sometimes, right? You're the peace, you want to be the peacemaker, you want to, you want peace, but what does that look like? And right. how do we do that? And so, so thank you. Yeah, we'll definitely be tuning in for that. Oh, thank you for this sensational morning. I'm, I'm so grateful. And to everybody on the other side and viewing in, whether it's, it's now or later on YouTube, um, we get to decide what flow looks like and feels like in our lives and, you know, giving and receiving and this universal law of circulation is always simply an exchange of energy and exchange of like even the comments with Wendy about peace today. It's just, it's such a flow and it's a sacred exchange. It's about yes. appreciation. And of course we know that what we appreciate, appreciate. So if you feel this morning refreshed, inspired, reminded of your divine truth, brought to a place of deeper peace and to new awareness, encouraged, please consider visiting our giving page on our website, BrentwoodILC.org and share in an energetic exchange with us. We love to be in this dance of life, sharing our mission and love and these amazing, inspiring messages from beautiful human soul beings like Reverend Wendy and your <laughs> generous contributions make this possible. So thank you for always circulating that generosity with us. We receive with deep gratitude. Um, and we're so thankful. So we are going to close with our prayer of divine awakening, which I will put on the screen so that you can speak these words aloud and make this a declaration for your life. You know, just claim it for your, your every single day. And I should be sharing the screen. It should be up. This is the prayer of divine awakening. If you would like a copy of this on a little cute little card and you can put it on your kitchen counter like mine, let me know and I'll send one to you. It's a new day, a beautiful day, a new beginning. I embrace this day with new eyes, an open heart, and expansive mind. I choose my vibrational frequency deliberately and consciously, harmonizing with life's events. I am receptive to source energy, divine guidance, and wisdom available to me at all times. I commit to serve unconditional love fully and completely. I move forward in a state of appreciation an extension of the one magnificent power and presence. I am sovereign, whole, and free, claiming dominion over my life as I go in peace and awaken to my divinity. And so it is. Shine on, bright beings of love. We're so grateful that we're here together. And now we have about 10-ish minutes, um, maybe 12-ish minutes to take a quick break and come back to the Zoom. We're going to deep dive into this peace stuff that is so rich and beautiful. Thank you, Reverend Wendy, for being with us. We're so grateful for you. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to this really magnificent conversation. And we will see you in just a few minutes on the Zoom link. I'm going to drop it here in the chat. It's also on our homepage, brentwoodilc.org, right there. Come in, invite everybody because everybody's welcome. Blessings. <laughs> Bye, Bye everybody. Now. Bye for now.